She is among the many heroes who responded to last week's mass shooting at Michigan State University. If you were listening to the police scanner that night, you heard Ingham County Dispatcher Amy Barajas calmly and quickly relay vital information to first responders on the scene. I sat down with her to talk about that night and how she's doing a week later. It's a story you'll only see here on News 10. I love myself and my sister, my three-year-old niece live with me. For Ingham County Dispatcher Amy Barajas, it was just like any other night shift at Ingham County's 911 Central Dispatch. She was assigned to East Lansing and expected an easy night until 818 when more than a dozen 911 calls came in at the same time. I took one of the original 911 calls um, and there was a call of a student. And what did the student tell you? Um, that someone that there was a gunman and that he, they had shot her friend. She handed the phone to her partner and got on the radio, triggering the massive emergency response to an active shooter at Michigan State University. MSU units, I got a shot fired. Complaint at Berkey Hall, 509 East Circle. There's going to be a shooting victim. I'm trying to get further. I have a victim who's with the victim online on the phone. It was the beginning of a long night and a lot of coordination. Yeah, all I have so far is that there's a shooter in the hallway, multiple people shot in dorm room or in classroom 114. A lot of it, I can't remember. I just remember doing the initial, you know, getting units out there. I had um, my partners asking if they wanted other departments, and I said, you know, send everyone we got until we know what, know for sure what's going on. It would take hours to get a handle on what was going on. During that time, it was Amy Baraja's calm voice coordinating the response in a race to get help for the victims and catch the shooter. Towards the Union Building Westbound, do we have a description? For these officers out there, they don't know what they're going out to. They don't know what's out there. They, they, you know, they didn't know where the gunman was. My voice was a lifeline for them. Barajas was part of a team fielding the 911 calls. I can't imagine the ones who had to take those, my coworkers who took those 911 calls all night long. You know, I took one of them and I still hear the screaming. I can't imagine the ones that they took of people, you know, begging to stay on the line with them. 911 director Barbara Davidson said she never felt so helpless. They're so scared and they got, they've got they got you on the phone. It's somebody they can talk to that can maybe help them and you can't stay on the phone with them. You just can't. There were so many other calls coming in. We had, we had to. We had to say goodbye. That was very hard, very hard to do. Yeah, you're going to need multiple, multiple ambulances. We're getting them started from all over. Yeah. On a typical night here at the Ingham County 911 Dispatch Center, there's about 10 people taking calls and a supervisor on duty. The night of the mass shooting, there was more than 20 people here fielding some 2,200 phone calls and more than 240 911 texts. And, you know, people were calling like, oh, we see um, three people with long guns. And what, what they didn't realize that it was officers who came from home. How do you manage a caller that's maybe on the east side of campus? And then there's another caller on the west side of campus. Somebody had to be able to do that, to be able to manage all of that information to get it to the police. Amy did a great job keeping all of that organized. Organization and training the Ingham County 911 Center prepares for, hoping never to use, knowing they can help save lives. I think just because I was the main dispatcher on it, I've gotten so much attention, but I wouldn't have been able to do that without my coworkers. We worked like a well oiled machine. The 911 director tells me everyone at the 911 center is getting the help they need to process what they experienced that night. And by the way, they have a two year old therapy dog named Jessie, who you see behind me, who hangs out at the 911 center. And I am told she curled up next to Amy's feet that entire night. And we will keep following the investigation into the mass shooting at MSU. Follow News 10 as we continue to provide the latest information on our website, WILX.com and our social media platforms.